Ooh, here's a baffling job for the bench of no surrender tonight. So, customer had a faulty instrument cluster and he didn't send it for repair to us. He got his mate to do it. And I don't know what his mate was thinking because the mess on the cluster, I have absolutely no idea what he was trying to achieve, trying to achieve on here. We, uh, we tried our best. Um, there was lots of solder bridges across here wrecked. We cleaned up the solder pads there. I don't know what he was doing there, but he also tried to um, resolder the processor back on and it, it was just a mess. Um, we tried to uh, clone it for him. Um, we couldn't get a read off the processor. We uh, just taped this back on temporarily. We uh, we took the processor off the board and we tried to read it externally and uh, it's dead. It's completely fried. No chance. That one goes into uh, the pile. So the cluster, which um, he wanted to clone it onto, is here. Now, what we're going to do, or <laughs> what we were going to do, was to rig it up all on the bench and uh, program his keys to it and um, we need to adjust the mileage to it and synchronize it all in which normally we can do but the the problem is his cluster was in miles and the one he wants us to clone was in kilometers so uh, that had to go in the pile now what we've managed to do we've managed to uh, dig up some old dump files for these clusters and we have converted this cluster now to miles for him so it's going to be in miles not kilometers we've used the old print off his cluster so it's all going to be uh, correct when he's driving down the road it's going to be in miles it's going to be in miles and now what we're going to have to do is adapt the keys to the cluster and the cluster to the ECU so we're going to rig that up on the bench and uh, we're going to see what we can do okie doke so we're all rigged up on the bench we have uh, the Cluster connected at the back, connected by CAN bus to the uh, engine control module and the key reader is all connected up and we've currently got a key in there. Um, obviously it's not programmed to this cluster or this system. We're going to turn it on and the aim of the game is to get rid of this uh, flashing immobiliser light and uh, see if we can code it all in. So. Uh, what we're going to do is go on our laptop and we're going to see what car we've got connected here. Let's connect up. Uh, Recognises it. Focus. And let's go into Pat's functions and see what we can do. Raising the keys. It's going to take a bit of time. I'm not going to do this in real time. I'll uh, switch on again when we get close to the action. Right. Looks like we've erased the keys. So uh, remember that's for a different cluster. So uh, we want to get rid of those two and get our customers two keys in. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to do that. If you can't do it with this tool, there's other ways that we can do it. Right, so as we can see, we have now focused. We have deleted the keys, no keys stored in it. So next operation before we can synchronize it is to program two keys, not one. You've got to have two keys to do any of these operations. So we're going to program the two keys 
to that cluster. And back on here and we're gonna see if we can put the keys in. Ignition off. Service procedure has been interrupted. No, oh, it didn't like it. Okay, well, let's try again. Right, off and on, my bad. Go okay. Continue. We're gonna go, yes, let it generate its own code. Again, this takes a little bit of time, so uh, let's just come back in a minute. Right, so far it looks so good. Pat's reported has a success, but the counter of keys has not been increased yet. Please try to turn ignition off and on. Ignition and re-enter the Pat's menu and check the counter. Right, so let's OK that and let's see what happens. So we're going to turn the ignition off and on again. And let's see if it's gone up by one. Now we can see number of keys stored one. So we've got one key programmed in so far and we need two to go any further. So we're gonna um, switch the position to off, like so, ignition off. And then we're gonna get our next key, That's the first one, and we're gonna put the second one in. And we're going to turn the ignition on and then we're going to go OK. And it wants coded access again, so we're going to see that. And you're going to go yes. And again, it takes a few minutes, so uh, we'll come back to you in just a second. Again, we get the same message. It says uh, it's succeeded. Um, we're going to check to see if that key tally there, see if that goes up to two now, and then we'll know that this stage has been done. So uh, ignition off and on again, so ignition off again, and on again, and OK. And what do we have now? Number of keys stored, two. So first stage is uh, succeeded, so we've uh, don't want to put any more keys in. We're going to cancel that now. Now, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to switch the ignition off and we're going to see what happens now. It's uh, still going to flash rapidly because we haven't coded the engine ECU to the cluster. Or it, actually, sorry, my mistake. It's not going to flash rapidly because now the keys are programmed in. So these two keys are programmed to the cluster, but the um, cluster is not synchronized to the engine ECU. So instead of getting a rapid flashing now, we're going to get a solid light. And uh, then we're going to uh, check what the flash code is. I should have shown you earlier, but the flash code for incorrect key is code uh, 15, which is what we had before. Um, as always, the best things happen when it's off camera. But this is going to take uh, another minute, so I'm probably going to edit this. So we're going to do a quick time slip, and then we're going to see the flash codes and see what we've got. Right, so the one minute is up. We now have the flash code. So we're gonna count the flashes and then we're gonna see what they are. So this is the first set of flashes and we have now have code one, two. So that's code 20 something. One, two, three, code 23. So uh, if we research up flash codes, we're gonna see code 23 is a data mismatch, received data does not match what's expected. Security message do not match between the PCM and the instrument cluster. Exactly what we were expecting to see. So now we're gonna see if we can 
correct that. So we're going to go back into the PAPS functions. Uh, Again, it's going to take its time thinking about it, so uh, we're going to come back to it again in a couple of minutes. Right, please turn the ignition off. So, ignition goes off, and then we go... Okay, wait 15 seconds. Turn the ignition on, but don't start the engine. Well, we don't have an engine to start anyway, so we're going to go OK. Initialization successful. It's now complete. OK. So we're going to go uh, back to the cluster and uh, we're going to see how the cluster performs with ignition off and on now. So, ignition off, and ignition on, and let's see what that light does. It goes out. Perfect. Um, one thing strange, I normally see a mileage display in there, um, probably because it's an ABS module, I'm not sure, I've got to look into that. Um, if we turn the ignition off again, we do get the mileage display. Now, this is not the mileage for his car. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set that mileage up. I'm going to just confirm, get his reg number. Actually, I've got his reg number, but it didn't come up on the database. I'm going to confirm what the mileage is. We're going to set the mileage up. Hopefully, I'll get that on camera if, uh, if, uh, if I can be bothered. Um, but it's getting late at night. I'm going to call this one a success. We can uh, kill all the power now. So all the power is completely off. The car is complete sleep mode. Just to recap, we've got two keys. We're going to... We're going to try the other key, so we're going to try this key here. Um, clusters connected to the ECU, um, immobilizers connected to the cluster, knee bones connected to the thigh bone, and uh, let's see what it's all about. So, on with the power, and then with this switch we'll go on with the ignition. Watch the immobilizer light. Perfect. No more flashing. So, what is the moral of the story tonight? The moral of the story is, if you've got a faulty cluster and uh, you want to get it repaired, send it to us. If you've got a mate who says he's going to do it cheaper, he's seen it on YouTube and it looks easy, and he's bought a little soldering iron from, uh, I don't know, Aldi, don't get him to do your cluster. It's only going to end up in the pile, and it's going to cost a lot more money to get this done this way. Send us your cluster in, uh, we'll put some details up in the video. Thanks for watching, if you liked what I've done here, please click the like and subscribe because it means an awful lot to me. Cheers guys, see you on the next one. If you need more information on vehicle programming services, simply click on to ecuconnection.co.uk where you'll find a vast array of programming services for many ve different vehicles. Simply click on the component that you're interested in, select from the drop down menu the service that you need, Add it to the basket and send your item to us. Within a few days, your item will be returned to you, ready for reinstallation. We operate a programming service throughout Europe and the UK, and you can also call us for any advice that you need. Right, as promised, last little job to do is to set the mileage up right. So we're just gonna go back onto the laptop Gonna leave the ignition on. As we can see, it's registering 46,000 kilometers because all clusters, or nearly all clusters, are in kilometers. So we have to convert it to what we need in miles. Customers informed me that correct mileage on, is on or about 78,500. And uh, I'll write that in. 
This is going to go into sleep mode whilst it's writing in. Wait for the progress bar. And right is OK. So let's go back to the cluster, switch it off and on again, and see where we're at. Yeah, 78,493, plenty good enough. Job done.